Assalamu alaikum. You may be seated, brother and sister. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, to whom all praise is due, the Lord of all the worlds, he alone came to you and I in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the last of the God's works in this 25,000 year cycle. The next God that comes about will not do the work that he done. He just will be the God sitting there after his death, carrying out the same purpose and the same work, but not to renew anything. He would not be the major God Master Farad Muhammad is the major God. Yes, sir. You know, we have prophets and some we have minor prophets. But there are major prophets. Minor prophets only do the work that is given by the major prophets. So I thank Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and proved to us that Allah is not a spook. Right. Not a spirit right. Proving to us that God is human being And is a person So we have seen him And we have talked with him Sit down and question him In our home And not only question him there But question him uh, in the temple thousands of people questioned him and he had one special night for questions and that was on a Wednesday night in the city of Detroit while he was with us so I think that we should be very happy today to know that God came to us and owned us as his people. That's right. That's right. We uh, have been denied by all other people and by some of our own kind. That's right. So now we are in the saddle with God, knowing who he is, have seen him, talk with him, eat with him, walk with him, ride with him, and dance with him so we we know now yes I said dance with him not the holy dance that they are uh, that the uh, sanctification people say but a dance that is clean and good I've seen him do that. We did it in his presence. Why you don't do it now? You might ask. Because we don't know how to dance. Well, could you show us how he danced? Yes, I could tell you what kind of a dance he danced. But you see, a lot of our people, they get to dance and they want to shake a little bit, you know. <laughs> and that is no good. Not before wise people. Wise people don't do that. Like this we see on TV. No. That is not the kind of dance for you to do. You see, excuse me, please. You see some of, we see some of our people on TV, and if you got a little 
they be around there just turn around and look at him. Doing the same thing they've done on TV. That's right. I see that. If you have small ones, you would see it too. That is, if uh, you let them do that. Now, brother and sisters, knowing that Master Farad Muhammad is the God that visited you and I in the year of 1930 and left us in May of 1933, we know that somebody has been here by the name of God or the post that he holds as God by what's happening. When we look at it, we find ourselves in a very, very bad state. And I thank him for giving to us my brother who was blind, deaf, and dumb, just like you and I was just like you and I. So he uh, took up the burden as Master Farad Muhammad laid it on his shoulders in the form of a key to unlock all of the locks of our people of savageness of an illness condition of not being as we should and to destroy the lock after he had unlocked it so that you wouldn't find it again and that is a true fact. You will not go back to what you have done if you would keep up the teachings that he taught you. Then why do people go back to that what he and turn away from that what he taught? That is because you have so many leaders, you have so many people that does not care for what he taught. He wants to be the great I am that I am themselves. And that we can't go with. You understand me? As a he taught us that the um, messenger that came to us, who is my brother, at least sent to us by being raised among us here in the hills of North America. He was sent. A sender sent him. And that sender was none other than God. It had to be a God to send Mashin Elijah Muhammad because nobody else could do it. What man would come to you and tell you that God is man and he made it of himself? You can catch him very easily. But if he didn't make it of himself and God sent him, can't catch him. 
people have said they caught him, but they only lied for themselves. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to keep you here because talking that way, I could talk with you from now on, and I'm not going to keep you a long time because the sun looks good out there. You want to get out there and cut a step or two? I want to cut a step too, but I want to do it up here. <laughs> I'm happy to see you here, you who is present, and those that are not present and wanted to be here and couldn't get here, I thank Allah for them. I have um, something I want to bring to you for a close understanding. I want to bring it to you. I hope that you pay good attention to it. It is good for you to know it. That's why that I'm giving it to you today. Now before we start that, I, I want to say to you on Savior's Day, we all know this is the month of Ramadan. We know what we do in that month. It's been around here for the past 60 years. So uh, I want to let you know that on the coming Savior's Day, we're going to have two Savior's Days. One on a Sunday the 17th and then the next Sunday of the last Sunday in February we will be here on the 17th we will be in California for that one and after we leave there we come back here so we will celebrate two different states for Savior's Day, which the 17th is not the birth date of Master Farad. His real birth date is on the 26th of February in 1877. He was born. Oh, the God, you, he can't be God if he was born. Yeah, he can be God, he was born. Hope you listen at it real clearly. I will say this to you, don't forget the Savior's days. You will know it in a way constantly from now on until the day come and after it's passed. Now if God was born, when did he came? When was the first God present? We have a time of seven or eight trillion years from the time that we know the first God. Seven or eight trillion years. Seven or six trillion years we have when he began to create and to make the universe. As we see in this first God, we find that there has been three, three million one hundred twenty thousand 
God's has been born. After the creation of the universe. Do you understand? Do you hear me? I don't know if you understand or not, but I want you to hear me. Three million one hundred twenty thousand gods was born. A god is born once every twenty five thousand years. He don't live that time out personally. Every god dies. No, you might say, no, they don't. Well, then show me one that do. Yes, sir. That's right. Jesus died, and we never seen his father. So we say. Right? Right, that's right. But he could not been flesh and blood and don't have a father. That's right. That's right. His father have to be what he was. Flesh, blood, and bones. He bore witness with it. He says that he was born of the flesh. He proved it to Dalton Thomas by saying to him, see that his spirit have no flesh and blood as you see me have. And he invited him to come and feel the place in his side where he had pierced him. And it was large enough, the book said, for a man to put his hand there. Right? Right. That was a lie. <laughs> Don't feel bad now because uh, if I have to talk like that, that was a lie. Which is facts. You know, you we can't you know a lot of people can't understand if you say it was not true. But how do you make that be a lie? Because the book tells you who his father was. It tells you that Joseph was his father. Was Jesus' father. <clears throat> now, brother and sister, You might have questions to ask me concerning that. If you do on the next Sunday, write them down. Don't write too many. Just one or two. And give it to the secretary or to the lieutenant. And um, I'll answer it for you. But right now we got the subject today uh, for a little while, not long is the doom. The doom. Taught by Messenger Elijah Muhammad. The doom. It is in book four of the Theology of Time. The judgment is now. knowledge of this day and time. The judgment is now. If I had started at one o'clock, I could not have finished what I'm taking up with you. It might go into a whole two months before I finish it. Like we did the uh, 
He makes all things new. Now I want to show you something about the understanding of something written here in the fall of America. I hope you are listening good and clear. That is on page 240. You have to excuse me, I'm slow, I know it. I'm not a slow man and don't know it and think I'm fast. I'm a slow man and knows it. That's right. So we will look at that page, 240. This page at 240 in the book, The Fall of America. You have words there. on this page that is referring to mother's plane that is a very simple thing to understand after I read it to you very simple to understand because it is only talking about the God and the, and the vision that a man who was a prophet by the name of Ezekiel seen in a vision because he was a prophet to prophesy it and nobody else seen such a thing but Ezekiel according to Bible. At the beginning of this subject and fall of America on page 238, Ezekiel, as we quote, Ezekiel saw the mother's plane in a vision according to the Bible. He looked up and saw this plane, Ezekiel. 1 and 16 and he called it a wheel because it was made like a wheel a plane that is wheel shaped can turn in any directions at any time he admitted that the plane was so high that it looked dreadful and he cried out oh wheel that was mother's plane that he seen according to the teachings of master Farad Muhammad and his messenger Elijah Muhammad I have seen master Farad draw that wheel when I first saw him teach it he drew it himself on the blackboard and taught from that. I have heard the messenger teach it thereafter. I heard it until I wanted to know it and repeat it like they did. And thanks to Allah that he gave me the knowledge of some of that wheel and I could teach it, I can teach it, like I heard them teach it. And that's the only way I know. Listen at me clear now. I don't know anything else that I can add to that wheel and say 
I know this or I know this about it. Just because I myself seen it too. You understand me? But distance from Mother's Plain when I saw it, it was about the size of your two fists. About the size of your two fists. And it's sitting in the skies on the clear morning. Clear morning uh, about four, between four and five. You could see it as it would move about, standing still, you could see it. Just like you take and look at the sun, you see that something in the sun jumps, right? So it is with mother, Mother's plane. When you look at it, you will see it dancing. And we was told what it was when it was first shown to us. This plane, as the messenger says, now I'm going to answer this right quick, and I'm going to let you then another one, then we try to see what we can start. Because I don't want to keep you too long. There's more days coming, I pray. I pray, yes, sir. So we're going to take up a couple of his paragraphs in the fall of America as he teach mother's plane. We are not going through with the whole thing but just a portion here in this paragraph about three of them. First we want to let you know what he's teaching. He is not teaching to you of something that uh, somebody dreamed about. Ezekiel saw it because he was in his vision while he stood by a river, according to Bible, right? So now Ezekiel had to make his vision clear like he like other prophets had to make theirs clear by saying wheel o oh, wheel which meaning in the future some thousand years after this you and I will see that wheel just more plainer and more accurate in the time that it shall do its work. Now let us quote these verses and get through with it, okay? The messenger writes to us teaching us in this history part of Mother's Plain, which would have taken up the whole book itself if he had just talked about Mother's Plain itself all the way through. So we quote here, there is no, there is no known equal of the Mother's Plain. There is no known equal. There is nothing that is known that can equal 
mother's plane. This is the reason why she is called the mother plane. Here, he tells us in another part of it that the mother plane is called by that name because she has small planes on her, which is about 1,500 that she carries. So she is the mother, same like a mother carrying a child. And by carrying these 1,500 surf planes, these surf planes only carry one pilot. And this one pilot carries three bombs. If you have read it, you know what I'm saying. And if you haven't read it, listen. If you don't know it, listen for just a few minutes. The mother plane is made for the purpose of destroying the present world. That's what she was made for. To destroy this present world, this earth, completely. Mother's plane is able to take this whole earth that we live on that uh, is 196,940,000 square miles. Mother's plane can take it and make splinters out of it and destroy the splinters. <laughs> and that is today what the devil, white people, and other devils are trying to make war with. And as one funny paper part said, that a brother wrote in Muhammad Speaks, that the devil said he would rather fight mother's plane with a toothpick. Then to bother with Elijah. The mother's plane is made for the purpose of destroying the present world. She has no equals. Do not marvel at the make of this plane since it is from the God who made the universe of floating planets. The planets that we see in the universe was made or created by the God from the beginning. And planets today can be made by the God if he want them in this present universe. I was told by the messenger that a planet comes from another planet if he so desire to want it. By whirlwind. And a whirlwind is a very slow traveling thing, but you see it, you think it's traveling fast. They don't get over 17 miles per hour. Whirlwind. Because then it's turning, it's turning like a wheel around in this shape. And as it turns like that, it picks up uh, fragments from the earth and it carries it about until she's out of your sight or she might die down in your presence those fragments won't go in a place but when another one takes it up with it it can carry it up 
into the atmospheres until uh, she become in the diameter of about 50 miles and she turning she tightening up and when she gets to that point if the God wanted to be a planet it will continue until it has made itself a planet to float in the universe because she's already turning and it have to turn to go around the sun so if she's too light and the God don't want it to be there he have the sun to draw this uh, planet into it and it's caught a fire when it is caught a fire the fragments come back to the earth it was did like that in the year of 1834 and at that time the people said the stars fell you remember reading that right no such thing as a star falling it is this planet here that was not wanted in the universe that clear enough for you if not we can uh, chat some more on it but I don't think we need it Let's go Since it is from the God who made the universe Of floating planets And stars which are supported Only by the power of Allah In their rotation In their orbit Their stars don't anybody live on them people don't live on stars people live on planets now here we come to a very interesting part Allah God who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise I do forever taught me the messenger says not me but Elijah Muhammad that the mother plane is a human made planet is a human made planet not meaning that uh, that God himself said as the book say be and there it is no no not that it is a human made planet you and I made it from the uh, blueprint that was given from God because we could not ever draw it up We could not ever draw up such blueprint. No other nation can make a mother's plane. They don't know how. The original man, the Arab original man, the black man of Asia, drew up and I mean made this after. Allah gave to them the blueprint and they go to uh, a little isle in the Asian Sea and they make it excuse me not the Asian Sea I'm thinking about uh, Yaku this was made in the Japanese water A little island out there where it was made and it was made there in the year of 19 finished in the year of 1928 Mother's Plain was finished at that time right. 
And plenty of people did not know what they was making. Plenty of the scientists did not know that they was making something to destroy the earth and destroy nations of people on the earth. They didn't know that. That's why Master Farad Muhammad said to us, uh, you pray that we don't use mother's plane because it will destroy the whole earth if these scientists and gods get together, get together and uh, wish to destroy all of the wicked, including you and me who have done wickedness on the earth. Mother's plane is built to set up the righteousness on the earth. There's, there's a lot of it that we could say concerning it, but that is not it today. If a human made planet, humans made it, men made it, humans made it. That's why the messenger says, human made planet. Humans made it, human beings. And these human beings live on the planet that it was made on. Now is there things that that men rather that live on mother's plane, probably some of them have passed away on mother's plane because she contains enough earth on it to have to grow their own food on it. Enough was put on there to grow their own food and they can uh, stay up in the air uh, as long as they want to stay there without coming back to this uh, atmospheres here to get other hydrogen and oxygen. Mother's plane. The messenger says, "It is it not simple? Is it not simple for Allah God to make a new planet if He wants to? Think the first God came about as far as we can get as near to Him is seventy six trillion years ago and he made or called this earth into existence now that God don't live today but here we got what he created by the word be and every God come about he uses the same word he never tried to condemn the God behind him. He enforces with greater power than what that one had behind him. That's why that I never speak against no man. Listen. No man that have power to bring forth what he wished to bring forth. I don't speak against them. I'm like a brother told me while I was working at Chrysler. He said, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm scared of a man that can dip the seas with the palm of his hands. You know the Bible said that God had the power enough to dip the sea with the palm of his hand, right? 
He says, I'm scared of that man. I say, yeah, me too. So I'm afraid to argue the teaching of messenger Elijah Muhammad about any of it because I'm afraid of the punishment that Elijah Muhammad had that he can put on you. So I speak not against him. He made the human being the first God, right? He is the creator of us all and then give to us mates that we will be a people to produce ourselves in families. I don't think Reverend told anything like this. So in the making and the creating of the human family of the earth, he made something when the wicked was created by his God to destroy that one with. And since the time was up in 1914, then he was building Mother's Plane and finished it in 1928. After the finishing of it, they wanted to come to Western Hemisphere and destroy this man-made devil. <laughs> And after it was made and they wanted to do so, as I just said, then the God stops them according to the words of Master Farad Muhammad. He stopped them. Now, don't go now. Wait till I go there. Because there's people there don't know the right hand from the left. Don't go now. So it's simple for us to know that this little planet equal a half a mile by half a mile equaling one square mile and it's up into the air up in space let's read the other part the mother's plane is capable of staying out of the earth's gravity for a whole year out of this is fear of hydrogen and oxygen. This plane can produce her own hydrogen and oxygen. Because she is made in the wheel shape. Where there is no air felt in this room, you can put a wheel shaped fan in here and it will produce air for you and you'll cool yourself off or freeze yourself. So it is with Mother's Plane. She can produce her own and stay there for one year without even uh, getting anything else with her. You might find where he says how fast they traveled and whatnot and carrying it. So this is the Mother's Plane and, it's, and building it, 
the little human made planet is all simple after you become into the knowledge of it that today you have a fighting machine sitting in the universe made by the hand of men a human made planet nothing up there that's uh, in that kind of a use other than the planets like Saturn and uh, uh, Platinum and whatnot and, uh, in the universe like this one it carries whatever it desires to carry and in her fighting she will not come back to the earth she will not come back low enough regardless to pick up anything from this earth she's a fast traveling plane the, the astronauts and scientists that have been up there seeking and seeing it they said that this great big monster of thing that passed by them at the high rate of speed made them seem like they were standing still. <laughs> Mother's plane. You know, a lot of astronauts, they don't ever want to go back up, upstairs no more. No, they don't want to go back. Too much, they see that. The same as men climb mountains. A lot of them don't want to go back up on the high mountain because what they see up there, they don't want to see it again. Mother's plane is capable of staying out of the Earth's gravity for a whole year. She is capable of producing her own, uh, her own surface of oxygen and hydrogen as any other planet is able to do. Mother's plane carry the same type of bomb on her that our black scientists dropped on the planet Earth to bring up mountains out of the Earth after the planet Earth was created. That's all that you can say concerning them three paragraphs and including the last one, the second to the last of Mother's plane being a human made planet. It has nothing to do with you and me, only but one thing is we hurry and get into the nation of Islam so that we won't be destroyed by that human made planet. Continuing another one here. Excuse me. Continuing another one, another part here, and our Savior has arrived. I may not even touch my subject today. I don't know. So mother's plane, that planet, only meant that this wheel is made by the hands of human beings, and if our Lord God wants an other mother's plane, he is able, in his knowledge of today, to make an other one and a greater one. So says Messenger Elijah Muhammad. Now we have a word, of, a word on three points concerning the universe and the designer.
I hope you understand because we uh, we can't make these this up and then go and tell people, yeah, I, I know this and I know that. No, because we never know the end of it. A person should bow to the knowledge that is his superior. The black man A word on three points concerning the universe and the designer. We have three points. We find this on page 97. Our Savior has arrived by Elijah Muhammad, Messenger of Allah. A new universe, a new designer. There is no God living who was here in the creation of the universe but they produce gods from them and their wisdom lives in us you understand that none of those gods are living that uh, was here in the creation of the universe None of them is around. We can't talk to them. They are dead and buried and will not come back. You will never talk to one again. You will never see one again because the same gods said that when a man die, that's all she wrote. Human beings are created according to the life of the universe, planets. Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise are due forever, taught me, meaning Elijah, that the original designers and makers of the universe created it on time, and there is an end to it. There is an end to this universe. But when? You and I don't have to worry about that at all. We just don't know. That's right. Human beings are created according to the life of the universe. You take this planet that we live on, we have from the depths of the earth to its highest of atmospheres is 12 miles, right? From the surface of the earth is six miles up with, with atmospheres that you can live in. Otherwise you float. So says the scientist. And I believe that on the occasion or on the act of airplanes as we fly, they have to, and the birds as they fly, they have to take up their feet and stretch them out so that they can float. He can't fly with his feet hanging down. They got to go back. Airplanes can't fly you with the wheels hanging down. They got to be drawn up on the shelter. And then you float. So we are created 
according to the life of the universe. Now look, we cannot go to another planet in this universe and live there. It is not for us. The atmospheres on Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, or Platoon, or whatever, the others, we can't live there on those planets. So we are created on this planet, and that caused us to have to live here on this planet. We was created according to the planets in the universe. To whom praise are due forever taught me that the original designers and makers of the universe created it on time, and there is an end to it. There is an end to everything. That's why the gods themselves does not live always. No God live always. If the God that created the universe was living today, you would not have advanced. Taking another God to come along now and advance us. When he dies, it takes another God to advance us. Every God that comes about is wiser than the God that just left. Scientists have learned by study that everything we see that we call universe is not endurable. Nothing is endurable forever. It just was not made like that. Everything has to die. We have trees on this earth five and six to a thousand years old. Lives that long. We had people, according to Bible, live 969 years. Do we see any of them? That was nations on the earth that has been destroyed by Allah that the Quran never mentioned. As it says, how many nations have we destroyed? had prophets that the Holy Quran itself says they are not mentioned. Where are they? They are not here. We can't find them nowhere on the top side of God's green earth. So that makes us today to know that when we leave this earth in life, not in them, body but in life when we leave it in life that means then that the body is no more life is no more like in the bible says about Job said he says oh but my life is when Job said in my flesh shall I see God at the end Job said I have heard of thee now my eyes see thee in the flesh, not after he died. When a man died, that cuts off his history. He stops his rotating in the universe. It is gradually decaying, the universe is. It's gradually getting away from you. The Bible and Oracle 1 both verify this decay of the universe. And that one day a wiser God, then them all will exist in a new universe. Now that is making clear to us as the messenger said I don't have the time to write in a book and give you all that I desire for meanings in it or what come to me. So he explains 
definitely that what he writes. Just the little few things that you have to get understanding from. It is what he wrote. He, he uh, uh, made the understanding of it all. A messenger that is sent to people, he don't leave them blind. Because he come to open their blind eyes. And he can't leave them blind. That's why the messenger tells us plainly of the things that, as uh, he says, as Allah taught me. Making it plain to you. Holy Quran, Bible book, verify this decay of the universe, and that one day wiser God than them will, than them all will exist. He's saying here that now one day there will come a God about that will be wiser than all of the ones that was before him put together and all will exist in a new universe a new universe means see he tells what he's talking about a new universe means that it will not be exactly like this one that we know we know this one, right? So now if we make a new one, or if the God shall make a new one for us to dwell on, or dwell in, it won't be exactly like this one. And the messenger says, uh, in some other of his teaching, that if the God, when he creates something from this to be made anew or something else and going to destroy this one he would be a real poor God without much knowledge if he got to go and take and use something out of this universe especially when he's supposed to be wiser if you wanted to make a a car called uh, Shabazz or Muhammad or Ali or Bacha or Kareem or whatnot. If you wanted to make a car with that name to it and you don't know how to make one, you go and get a Ford or a Cadillac and you study it, you're not going to use what that one got. You're going to use something better than what that one got. That's why the black man today is told if he set up his own government, his government would be greater than all of the other governments. So a new universe means that it will not be exactly like this one that you, that, that we know. According to the hints of the Holy Quran, it will be a better one than we have. Naturally, after experimenting with a thing that has been made, just like I just said, right? We can improve on a new make of it. We can make something better. Look at this old dilapidated building we sitting here in. You can improve on it. Right now you can say, well, we, let's tear this thing down and build one. Build us another temple or something right on the right, right here and haul this stuff out of here and we're going to make one. We're going to make one better than this one. Why? Because you got the knowledge now. You have the knowledge of this uh, what you are sitting in and you have the knowledge of that what you want to put here. So we make a new one. 
That's why John said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down from God. New heaven and a new earth. Some say it's New Jerusalem. Yeah, but it won't have the Jew part on it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right. All praises do our Lord. The black man is God. According to the history, he taught me. Having all been the wisest, they made the white man after their order in wisdom accept the knowledge of how to bring in to reality and perfections their visions and ideas of what they want to perceive equal to the black man. Nothing equals the black man's wisdom. This was kept back. They are forced to build their world on the basis of what they found in the wisdom of the black man. That's why they had to take you from your land and bring you here to build a government for them. That's right. So those parts have been answered. There is no God living that was here in the creation of the universe. We are all made according to the air and where we are at on this planet. We can't go to another one and live on that air. It's not like this. Scientists have said that all that we see that we call universe, we live here in it. And you can't get out of it. That's right. This present universe equals 76 quintillion miles in diameter. And if you square it and then extract it, then you'll find that you cannot numerate the square miles of the universe. That's right. So how are you going to get out of it? As Master Farad used to say to us in his teaching, he says, we can let the devil walk around as long as we want on this earth. He said, but he can't get off of it. That's right. He can't walk off of it. Right. And the messenger says, in the time that the battle shall be fought between God and man, he said, I doubt, brother, that an airplane will get up off the ground. Yes, sir. This Why? Why? Because he got four judgments I put on him first. That's rain, hail, snow, and earthquake. Right. That's right. You don't have to put very much snow for him. He won't get up. That's right. He can't start slipping and sliding all over the, all over the ground. Right. Like that. Won't get That's up right. nowhere. So be particular when you get in one and he's going to go up on ice. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Brother and sister, I have more to answer. Why do we not eat meat during Ramadan? The messenger taught us yesterday was the first day of Ramadan, right? The messenger taught us that the reason we do not eat meat is because of the unity and the uh, peace that we will have in the hereafter with the wild animals. You didn't kill him. You didn't go rabbit hunting. You didn't kill a rabbit to eat. So you go to the water in another world and bring forth that what you should eat for 30 days. The Bible speaks of it. 
Quran makes mentions of it. That in the last day, after everything has been done by the God, that the lion and the uh, lamb right. will lay down together. Yes, sir. Sheep, all of them, while the lion, when the lion would eat a little lamb or go out and hunt and catch stuff to eat of the other wild animals, he won't do it at that time. He'll rather eat the hay. He'll rather eat the grass than to kill that little lamb and eat it. Who did that? You did it. Because you was praying all the time to send your peace to us. And the wild animals say, well, don't eat me. I'll do so for you. Because I serve Allah too. And according to the animals and that what we eat, they serve Allah better than you and me do. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Then why should we want to sit down to a table and eat meat? Meat. Did not you know in some of the markets that you go to to buy food and buy meat that they have a sign that says meat, meat. Have you ever noticed those signs where they are? They're among the poison swine. They call right. poison swine meat. That's right. That's right. Poison wine is a pig, you know that. For God's sake, don't touch him during the month of Ramadan. Leave him alone all the time. He is unclean to you. Think on how what the cow is by you not eating your beef. Look what she does. She gave you shoes to wear, right? Right. Then every day she go out in the field and come back home. She is so full of milk she can't hardly walk. By my hind legs. Go ahead, Spirit. How many? Bringing it to you. That's right. Now you're going to go and kill it and eat it all the year round? No, let's have some peace here. Yes, yes sir. Teach, Spirit. So that is why. Now the Ramadan that uh, we have in December, that is not the Ramadan that they have in the Eastern world. There's coming the hot month. That's right. So the messenger asked, Master Farad says, cannot we have Ramadan any time that we wish? He said, yes. He says, it's a fasting month. And you fast in that month for peace in the hereafter and peace now. That's right. He says, yes, Kareem says, you can have it. He says, uh, let us have our Ramadan in the month of December. Okay. So we got it. Right. Why? We don't have to go through the hot heat of the day and not drink water. That's why he asked it. We don't have to wait a long time before we eat. We can soon eat after five or six o'clock. We can eat. When it's dark, we eat. We won't eat none of this animal here. None of these beasts here. We won't eat them. We'll go to the water where life that I came from. That's right. To make mud, what do you mix with it? Water. And the Quran says that he made man from black mud. Right. 
I don't know how much water he put in it. I don't know that. But I know one thing. He lacks mud. You lacks mud. Not after you have grown all up that you like it so much. But when you was a child, you made mud pies. Right. Huh? All oh, praises do Allah. The month of Ramadan. We live and make it holy. Because Allah desires for us all to fast 30 days out of a year. And that is the fast in, in that month. And He also desires for you to fast. In the month, or in a month, three days, 72 hours, that is a fast. That is a greater fast of doing without than it would be in the doing without in the month of Ramadan because you're going to eat. You can eat in the morning before it is dark, before it's light. You can eat in the uh, Evening after light has disappeared in the dark, then you eat. But a fast, 72 hours fast, you don't eat nothing. Right. Nothing. You don't eat no food. Nothing. You don't eat a piece of candy, nothing. Day or night, until the 74 hours is over. And brothers and sisters, I guarantee you, you feel good afterwards. Right. Try it sometime, if you haven't tried it. Right. It heals the body. It makes you do away with all of the filth of poison in your body. And, it, and when you do eat something, don't go and load up after you fast them 72 hours on heavy food. Drink you something warm soup or something to stretch the intestines a little bit so that when you put the heavy food down in there, it will not agitate the weight. Of that uh, of your intestines, and you got to carry it, and you don't know what you're going to bump into. We would have to have longer for Ramadan, but when you stay away, that makes it hard. Come every Sunday, bring some people. Every Sunday. Bring one or two with you. So let's go see what this old man talking about. He might tell me something good today. He might tell me, he said, don't go and get your bottle of wine, whiskey, Beer, crack, we don't do that. That's right. You know that's a bad thing among us? That was created and made. Wasn't created, uh, but it was made for you and me to do that. So that we can go and buy it. Look. How many bear factories do your people own and operate for the president? Roosevelt. How many? 
they was making it for themselves. That was strolls right down on Gratiot and Russell. It was there before Roosevelt was president. White folks had saloons up and down the street before Roosevelt was president. You couldn't have now. If you did, he was going to buzz you down if you didn't pay off the police. That's right. And you had to keep paying them off. You couldn't be caught with lightning, as they called it at that time, in your house, which you know is made homemade whiskey. You call it coin today, right? Ain't nothing but garbage anyhow. <laughs> now, here we are. Here we are in a state that we need every black man and black woman to unite together to try to stop the condition of our oncoming generations. How are we going to stop it if we don't get together and do it? White folks are not trying to stop you murdering and killing each other. They are not trying to stop that. You call them, uh, there's a man full of dope or whatnot over here, and he's killing everybody up and down the block. He got a gun. Right. The man will be going to New York before the police get there. That's right. Right. He ain't thinking about you. What's your name? What street? What address you live on? You got to answer all of those questions before she can send the police there. That's right. And the man done killed everybody in your neighborhood. And gone to another one. <laughs> they don't care. That's right. Go to his neighborhood. Go to his neighborhood. And cut off one head. Every police and uh, uh, <coughs> and uh, security of the government will be there. Even his army, they all will come out. Right. What's the matter, right. nigga? Out here, got a sword cutting off white folks' head. That's right. That's right. Wow! Oh, here they come. That's right. Teach. <laughs> and man, if it's quite a few of the black ones, here come the army. That's right. Tanks and everything. What's That's the right. matter? Two niggas down there. That's right. That's right. Teach me, Teach me. Teach me. Why don't we obey the rules of Islam? Unite ourselves together That's and right. become one people. That's right. Having one leader. That's right. Yes. One. That's right. I'm not talking about a gang of leaders. What do you want with a gang of leaders to lead you? That's right. right. Well, you got one here, one over there, one down there, one back up here. A leader. Why? Because we are so dumb, we don't want one. We want a gang of them. Look at the Christian churches. How they sitting about in our neighborhood. Plenty of them is different denomination, and all of them say they are right. That's right. How in the hell can all of them be right? <laughs> right. And all of them against each other. That's right. Why don't they unite and all be Baptists, all be sanctified? Right. Uh-uh, no, you ain't right, Baptist. You ain't right, sanctified. And don't mention the Muslim tongue. Oh, no. You no. get your head cut off then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Peep out of people. 
وکیل لکھا میرے مسلم لیڈرز دیر وی گا گینگ آوان نو باری وائی پر دیم that's right when the Quran itself says Islam was the religion of every human child that is born it was the religion of Abraham Moses Jesus and all of the prophets that was before them Islam was their religion now look at what you got today you got half Islam half Christians you think God liked that you can be whatsoever that you want to be according to the teaching of Master Farad Muhammad to his messenger. The messenger said to you and to me that when Allah comes that he will not uh, uh, have any religion other than Islam. And Islam would be the only religion that he would verify. That's right. Teaching of the Holy Quran and the Bible. Yes, sir. Here we are walking around here. I know this and I know that and yes, don't sir. know nothing. Right. It's a shame, brother. Yes, sister. sir. That's right. <clears throat> Can I say it? Yeah. Look at how many people flocks out to see other leaders in Islam when they come to big buildings. Go to the new temple and see if all those people is there. No. Why? You got too many leaders. Islam, the natural religion of man. Right. The natural religion of man. So says both books, Bible and Quran. The Bible just don't say Islam. That's right. Says God. Yeah, we walk around here day after day hollering and praying to God to please. Stop people from killing one another. That's right. So I can walk down the street in peace. That's right. You've never seen so many homes made jailhouses before in your life. That's right. Got to put bars up. Right down the street, they got bars on the church. You got to go open the bars up to get That's in right. there. When you walk out, you got to slam the gate together with bars in there. And that's supposed to be the house of God. Right. Tell me you in unity with who? Tell me you love your brothers and sisters. Who are they? Right. Yes, sir. Bible says love your enemies. When? When are you going to love your enemy? Love thy neighbor as thyself? When? Your neighbor living next door to you can be the damn his wife's enemy is on top side of God's earth. Excuse me, sisters, brothers, but it's barefooted. That's right. Hide not the truth while you know it. <laughs> no sir brother I do not announce myself as a prophet no I don't announce myself as a prophet my brother here called me one that's right and I've had other people to call me one that's right people in LA have asked me was I a prophet that's right I said, no, I don't call myself a prophet. 
I'm just a message from the message. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yes, sir. Did not you know that other people can find in a book about you faster than you would find it about your own self? That's right. If I wanted to be a prophet, probably I could. That's right. Because the prophet don't do nothing but predict things to come to pass. That's right. That's right. You can do that. Watch yourself how you talk sometime and then watch what happens. That's right. Yes, That's right. Listen. You can be prophet in that way. But the way that this is as it is is you a prophet from God. I am a teacher from God. That's right. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. He made me God Almighty in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Yes, sir. Anointed my head with oil. Yes, and my cup ran over. And as it ran over, he said, John, go and teach it. Yes, sir. So if he made me a teacher, I can make a prophet. <laughs> right? That's right. If he made me a teacher, a prophet have to have a teacher. That's right. That's right. Listen. <laughs> Don't take the wrong handle. In one book there he says, I am not a prophet, neither a prophet's son. Right. But I can be your prophet until the prophet comes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. People have wrote me letters asking me, is you a prophet? from things that I would tell them in answering their letters, telling them how to live, how to be, so that they can uh, become better in the life that they want to be in. That's right. My brother taught it to me. Now we one time called him prophet, mentioned Elijah Muhammad. We one time called him that, and he said, no, don't call me no prophet. I'm the messenger and the last of them. Yes, sir. <laughs> if so, why did messenger Elijah Muhammad say he was the last of the prophets? Meaning, if you say you are a prophet, then how is it Elijah say he was the last of them? He is. Last of the messengers, last of the prophets, the last of the justice, the last of the equality, the last of the blessings from our Lord that is going to come to the so-called American Negroes. Anything that's good coming into you, he is the last of it. That's right. If it was not for the promise, let me tell you this. If it was not for the promise that I stood on eight mile and now, uh, Woodside Avenue with Master Farad Muhammad and Messenger Elijah and I made a promise there with those two. If I had not did that, I would never have nothing to do with a gang of niggas trying to teach them something else. That's right. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Listen. Okay. All right. There is plenty of people I'm not saying calling you a Negro or a nigger. I'm not calling you that. 
because a nigger is something that is a blunt piece of iron. Unlike a man that stands out in the water at a sawmill. He's an iron man. And they call him a nigger. Every time a log come by, he hit it. And the devil stand back and said, just look at that nigger hitting that log. And when you was in fold shaking out, white devil standing back, look at that nigger, how he shake out them wheels and whatnot. That's right. That's right. Nigger is something that's dumb and blunt. Knows nothing. That's right. That's what we used to call ourselves. Right. Yeah, a person on the street said, oh, nigger. What else? That night he was calling a nigger. He didn't know nothing to tell him. Only said, don't call me a nigger. I'm a colored man. And he's saying the same thing. <laughs> oh, my dear brother and sister. Yes, sir. I am the brother to the last of them. That's right. And I made my promise to him. Even while he was in the uh, Mercy Hospital, I think that's the name of it, there in Chicago, I shook hand with him. And his fingers on his hand, the skin, had begun to cleave to the bone. I pushed up the shirt that he had on. I said, let me see your arm. And his arm had no flesh on him. Skin and bone. I looked at it. And I told him what a brother had asked me to do was to come to the little isle of Bermuda to teach for him. This is what he did. When I told him that, he held his head. I held my head down. There. This is him. Look now. This is him right here. His voice was so low. I had to put my ear right to his mouth. He said, go, brother. He said, this is a beautiful world. Go see it. And teach Islam as you go. That's what he's whispered in my ears. Voice so weak that a lot of people want to know who said you told John to be a minister. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Not only did he do that, but before my brother sitting right back there, he told me he said you was an evangelist. I make you the evangelist. I go where I want to go. That's right. If I want to go to the devil to preach it, I can go there if I want to. But if I go to them to preach anything, it will be that Allah have came and whispered in my ears and said, John, go tell the devil this or that. And then I will be kind of slow moving looking back at him. <laughs> People talking about warning Reagan's. Right. Warning Bush. Right. Warning them. Bush and Reagan's knew more about the world that's coming on than any black man in America. Right. Other than the Muslims that Allah have taught it to. Bush knows what he's into. But Bush wants to rule the world. And the only way now he can rule the world, that is conquer the East. He got the other parts conquered. He even got space conquered. He got the depths conquered. He can make a machine to go and crawl on the floor of the deepest ocean from side to side. That's right. Now he's got planes 
that no man riding in it riding in the universe to take pictures of different planets the devil That's right. uh -huh. white folks right. at the same time the bible said that the devil has power over death <laughs> oh yes the bible says got power over death the devil he proved it to you Listen. and you can prove to him that he does not have the power over God do it like Abraham did this uh, devil which one was that I was telling you about the other night Nimrod, Nimrod. Uh -oh. Nimrod. yes he went out and got eagles and made him a chariot and he sit in the chariot. Yes, sir. He's going to go beyond the sun and the moon and the stars. He's going beyond them with two eagles. He got up so high he got scared. That's right. And came back. That's right. Meet Abraham, he said to Abraham, he says, I am God. I can cause you to die and I can cause you to live. He called two men from prison. He told the servant, says, kill one and let the other one go free. Servants did it. He looked at Abraham. Said to Abraham, he said, you see the power I got? I can save your life. I could have killed them both. Tell them like Abraham tell them, told him. Abraham said, yeah, but my God caused the sun to rise from the east. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you cause it to rise from the west? <laughs> yes, sir. Nimrod trembled and trembled and trembled. He knew he could not cause the sun to rise from the west. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, my time is, is long gone. Thank you for being here. No, I'm not a prophet, as you might take it to be. Yes, sir. And being the last, I can say this. I am the last brother that will teach you directly like messenger Elijah Muhammad taught you. I am the last brother will do that. That's right. If you don't believe it, don't take my word. Go to every Muslim temple in North America and see for yourself. Yes, sir. I don't care what he say he is. I'm the last one. That's right. That will teach what he said. That's right. I am the last man that will stand before you to teach what the messenger taught you and me. And don't ask you not for one penny to help me out to get me gasoline. I buy my own gasoline. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't ask people for nothing. And I have the authorities to charge you $10 a head every time that you enter the door. That's right. I mean authorities from God. That's right. From what he said. That's all right. I'm not mad with a person to ask me such questions that they ask me. It is time that you know that a brother from the messenger is standing up for that which God taught him. Yes, sir. You can call me a fool. You can say I'm crazy. You can say I'm too old. But I'm yet is not as old as Abraham was when he was called to teach. That's right. Hmm? That's right. And I've been teaching for quite a while. Yes, sir. 
I was a real young boy. When Master Farad told me to go to the mount, go and mount yourself up on the rostrum, and, and, you, and you go there, Mount my, my Sharif, so you tell them all how they should give the money to come into the, as they come into the temple, how to give it. So, so you can pay the light bill, the gas bills. And if we take enough five or six dollars out of five or six hundred people, we did a marvelous thing at that time. I'm talking about it back in the 30s. Yes, sir. You said it won't come again? <laughs> <laughs> You, you were in 1929 and 99 and I half day now. <laughs> That's true. Right. That's you, think, right. you think I'm wrong? Read your newspapers and whatnot and see if they're going to lay off this one and that one. Right. When they get tired of putting in this kind of uh, uh, man-made material that can be men in there, where they work four and five men, one man will be there. That one man going to be a white man and the black one going to be at the welfare. That's right. I ain't lying to you. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. God Almighty told us that in these words. He said you, when we wasn't making hardly 15 cents a day with a junk card, he said to us, he says, the day is coming that you will make 25 and 30 dollars a day. How much do you make now, brother? <laughs> you make good in the factories today, don't you? And I left out the factory, I was making $2.28 an hour, and I thought that I was doing a hell of a thing. And wasn't getting nothing. Then I retired, and what do I get today? A pinch. 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 First day of the month, a pinch. And that's what you working for to get a pinch? No, don't work for that. That's right. Come together and build for, build for yourself so that you won't have to get a pinch, you get a handful. Yes, sir. I've been right here in Highland Park, right on this corner here, since 1986. 83. 83, rather. Right here. We, t we lost a year and a half trying to make it as good as it looks now. A year and a half it took us. You, If you had passed by here, you saw what kind of a junkyard it was. That's right. Now I ask the people, I put our little handbills around in the city. Ask the people, will you help? We want to build a school right. for our children. Not one person in Highland Park ever mailed a penny to, to the temple because uh, uh, I see all of it that come in. That's right. Not one. Mail one penny to help. But that's all right. We still have a room here that we can we can teach a little bit of education to some of our children now. That's right. Still got it. We opened it our own sale. That's right. White folks won't give you not one penny. That's right. They didn't give the messenger any. Do you expect for them to give us any? And we teaching the same thing he taught. But he still uh, brought forth uh, enough food to feed millions of people. That's right. Will you help me so that I can go and tell the people in big crowds like you helped Clark Khan and Wallace Dean Muhammad? Yes, sir. Can I tell them the truth while they are mixing some of it in? That's right. You mean to say they mixing it in? Yeah, I mean to say. That's right. I'm not afraid. If I'm not afraid of my machine guns all sitting around, why should I be afraid of a man that got no power? That's right. No. Remember, 
while the three Hebrew children was in the fire which was no fire it's talking about you and me walking around in the fire that one was in there just one got in there with him and the king went there and he asked him he says what's the matter heat the fire seven times out or why he says seven times in the seven thousand years you should be burned up Go ahead and heat the fire. When he hit the fire hotter than me, said, go back and see if they burn up now. He looked in the furnace and he said, no, he's still walking around in there. But it's another one with him. <laughs> he said, it's another one walking around in the French with him. And he's got a, a fan in his hand. <laughs> and uh, he looked to me, the king said, like the son of God. He looked like the son of man, the son of God. Don't you know, brother and sister, that we are in a dangerous state? Listen. Listen. When the sun have to come and walk in the fire with us. Didn't that you know, Master Farad Muhammad said to us that he was the long awaited Jesus? And being the long-awaited Jesus, what did they say Jesus was? Son of man, huh? The son of God. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Hear me for a little while. Right, that's right. One of these days, I won't stand before you and tell you anything. to a rush listen here if the people want two Savior days in one state and a Savior day in another state and I have to go to both of them and tell them about our Savior who has visited America yes sir yes sir then somebody has lied listen do you hear me? Somebody has lied. That's right. Listen. When it gets big enough that the airplane will not take me to these different cities, I still will get there. That's right. That's right. I stand in one place and get to all of them. Yes, sir. And have Savior's Day. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know but one God. Yes, sir. And him, I shook hand with him. Some have asked me, says, did Farad ever tell you that he was God? Yeah. yeah. Master Farad Muhammad told me in this words, in these words, that he was God Almighty. When he was standing on the rostrum and I went by to shake hands with him and my mother was in front of me. When he got to me, he looked down at me with a smile. He says, keep on reading, brother. I am the man. Yeah. Then who is greater than Master Farad Muhammad in this day? Right. Who could come here and shut up the mouth of wise people right. through you? That's right. I am the man, he said. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you tired of me, I'm going to stop. No, no, sir. No, sir. Just warm it up. <laughs> yeah, but they wouldn't sit. <laughs> Like that. I don't want them to sit until it's 
completely dark outside. It's yes, getting sir. dark out there now. Yes, sir. The light, just a little bit is out there, not much. So uh, I'm going to bring my talk to close until next Sunday. If it be the will of Allah, I'll be here. If it's not his will, you won't see me. I got one sitting here can do. That's right, that's right, brother. That's right, that's right. Not only that, got some more sitting out oh, there. That's right. Right. that's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. I teach them once a week. Yes, sir. Let him carry my words to them. Yes, sir. And he don't add neither take away. That's right. I said my words. That's right. The words of Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. His words is my word. And I have never yet taught before people that he condemned what I said. That's right. Because if he did, he'd have condemned himself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, did you learn anything today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. I thank you for being present today. Bring five next Sunday, each person. I salam alaikum. <laughs>